because the center left, center right, right wing parties, left wing parties and so on, uh, because there is a total collapse and total lack of faith in these parties, uh, and particularly in the United States, Republican Democrats and so on, there is first a kind of turning away from the political parties. And in the United States, probably the Obama moment is quite decisive that a lot of these young people had put their faith in Obama. And when Obama does what he does, that very immense mass of young people now say none of these political parties are going to do anything. We cannot go on saying vote for so and so and so and so. so and for many, the lack of faith in the parties immediately goes to the next stage of not having faith any longer in the system as such. We want some other system, not capitalism and so on. That's, that's one sort of trajectory. But connected with that is something that occurs to me and I would like to have your opinion on it. With the defeat, decline, stagnation, whatever words you want to use, both of communism and social democracy, what seems to be emerging also is the third great radical movement descended from the 19th century, which is anarchism. Uh, and it, 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 what interests me also is, in many places, it is coming self-consciously as anarchism. But in many of the manifestations of these social movements, they may not at all even be aware of what the lineage of their politics really is. But the lineage is anarchism. Yeah. Uh, the, the lineage is anarchism, syndicalism, you know, that. that. Yeah. Um, how would you respond to all of these? There's, no, there's a zeitgeist about, especially uh, amongst the young people in and out of universities. It's, it's a zeitgeist where, where what really gets them turned on is horizontalism, is everybody must agree at the smallest local level to everything. Um, it's astonishing because this is occurring at the same time that you have this incredibly fast communication. And I think it is, well, without in any sense saying that it's Facebook that causes Cairo, <laughs> yeah. uh, Tahrir Square. Nevertheless, there's no question that, new that, that this is a means technology. of communication that plays a role. Sure, Just as absolutely. Marx said absolutely. in the 19th century, absolutely. what took the bourgeoisie centuries, the working class with telegraphs is able to organize much more quickly. Absolutely. Every new technology is important. Exactly. The way and it's playing, yeah. playing a role. Playing a role. So it's, and it's a very fast means of communication. Very fast. But the, the type of politics is unbelievably slow. Right. Every meeting, every discussion in New York, in uh, uh, Zuccotti Square, yeah. it was decided very early as they were getting money brought in, and a lot of it was coming from the unions, right. that they should invest in garbage cans so the city would not have the excuse of moving in because the site was unsanitary. This was put to the public meeting that's held every day where you know everybody speaks yeah. and re repeats what is spoken yeah. and so on in the forum. Uh, borrowed from the Argentinians in 2001 in the streets and they passed it. But before they passed it, someone picked up their hand and said, I want to amend that this, the garbage cans have to be bought on eBay. And then someone picked up their hand and they have to be fair trade garbage cans. Well, the result of this kind of, so, okay, because one person said it, you have to agree. Two weeks later, they still didn't have garbage cans. Because the discussion is still going on, on garbage cans. <laughs> right. Yeah. Now that's, you know, it's a negative example. There are very, very positive things yeah. about it in the way sure. they're dry. But it does reflect, and what turns on students, I must say, and, and not only students, young people who aren't even in the universities, is this wonderful horizontalism, localism, consensus, we're all going to talk it out, etc., and a suspicion of representation. Right. Right. Uh, it's not just that they've been, you know, indoctrinated with postmodernist ideas. 
where the representation crisis, of course, is central to the whole thing. Some of them don't even know of that. It is something in the air, which is something we have to. Yeah. So, so this is so, but 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 that also is sort of some sort of a pale shadow of Proudhon. Of course. <laughs> no, no, I totally agree. Now, and and yes, so I think many of them then do come across anarchists yeah. who give them a historical, ideological, theoretical basis for what has already attracted them. Right. Uh, it, it's there, and we can't ignore it. It makes politics very frustrating. There's, we get a lot of attention in Toronto because we have a group called the Socialist Project that does a bulletin that gets a lot of internet uh, exposure. We've created a group called the Workers' Assembly, which is attempting to be able to allow us, allow in generally, people to orient themselves to labor struggles in the city and beyond and so on. But we are spinning our wheels in order to be able to accommodate people whose politics is organize the next protest and only organize the next protest. That's all that excites them. Plus, nobody should speak for longer than a few minutes, worries about elections, you know, let's have a, insofar as we have any central committee at all, it'd be by volunteers. The usual problems that have existed through this process of a certain tyranny of structurelessness. Yeah. And we have to overcome this. Yeah. Uh, one last question. Uh, Occupy Wall Street now has been there for uh, an Occupy movement now, one should call it. And it has spread to hundreds of cities and so on. but. It also appears that it seems to have reached a plateau, uh, and they would, from a, from afar, from in, from, you know, looking at it from India, it appears that they have reached a plateau that they would have to invest a lot of energy just in keeping up the momentum. Um, do you see any uh, any real dramatic breakthrough as? The spring comes and the uh, summer. Well, you know, the great the student of American summer. social movements, Francis Fox Piven, mm -hmm. uh, you know, says that one needs to see these things not in a linear way. That, you know, if one goes back to the American civil rights struggle, the first uh, actions were taking place in 1955, in fact, and then they begin to dribble away, and then you get the bus, boy, bus boycotts a couple of years later, etc. So she, I think, think wisely says that, you know, there was the moment with Wisconsin in the United States when they occupied the right. assembly building. Uh, and then it petered out for a while, and then it took a very different and surprising form with the Occupy stuff, initiated by quasi-anarchist, very cute magazine in Canada called right. Adbusters, right. Uh, which does mocks of corporate advertising and thinks the only problem in the world is that the American Supreme Court ruled that corporations were legal persons, yeah. right? Uh, but it really took off. And I think it took off because it captured something that people wanted to hear. Ordinary people wanted to hear. Ordinary working people wanted yeah. to hear. Yeah. It yeah. spoke in, in, a, in a class terms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which yeah. nobody yeah. does. Right. So 99 to 1 is a very is crude a great class slogan? analysis, yeah, but it's, but it's, it's a class a great, analysis. It's a great slogan. It's a great class slogan. Yeah. Yeah. And, and by... It was a bit like saying the emperor is no clothes. The fact, once they said it, it articulated a discourse that people wanted to hear. In that sense, it's been very important. Now, part of the problem with these things inevitably is that the main purpose of it after a while becomes to keep this particular occupation going. And the main point of the whole exercise is how are we going to keep occupying this little space? Right? In that sense, it becomes very inward-looking rather than outward-looking. That said, and of course, as winter came, as the police played the inevitable role they would play, it's dissipated. It isn't so much a matter, though, of expecting it to reoccupy, although there will be reoccupations. In New York and elsewhere, out of it has come an attempt to work with people in the Bronx and other parts right. of New York City in terms of not allowing dispossessions right. of people right. who right. are being moved out of their homes. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's important. Right. And if it leads to that kind of grassroots organizing, if it isn't diverted into, well, nevertheless, we've got to get the Democrats in, uh, which will be very, very tempting, and you can't even criticize people right. for it. Uh, because even if Romney's the candidate, 
the balance of forces in the Republican Party has shifted even further to the right than before. Uh, so it could be that they'll galvanize them electorally uh, this uh, year. Uh, so I mean, so it's, 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 it's really, at this point, it's really sort of open as to how yeah. it goes. The, and we shall the, see. But I just we want see. to say yeah. that there are an increasing number of people in the United States who grew out of this local protest politics or were involved in local organizing like the worker centers, uh, black power centers, etc., who are increasingly seeing themselves as limited in those activities and who are explicitly talking about themselves as a cadre that needs to go national, right, right, right. that needs a political yeah. organization, yeah, yeah. and that needs to go national. You actually hear more talk about this in the United States than you do in Canada, mm -hmm. than you do in many European countries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that may be an important development. That's so. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, thank you.